Brookfield and officials and guests, the continuation of the 2019 <laughs> annual town meeting is hereby called to order. I declare that we have a quorum. The posting has been officially made and was read last week. A couple of announcements. If you have a cell phone, please mute it or shut it off or throw it in the trash or do something. <laughs> Only registered voters should be in the main section of the seating area. If you are non-registered or a non-resident, you need to be sitting over to the left. All speakers must approach the uh, microphone and use the microphone. Be sure this one's on. Wait. What's that? Working. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. So when you when you come to the microphone the first time, you must uh, state your name and your address. I want to get through this tonight. So. I'm going to try something, and this is typically done in, in town meetings, and I don't know if it's ever been done here, but I'm going to try it. In order to complete this tonight, and we have two very lengthy articles, um, and the detailed nature of these articles, and the potential for a long debate, I'd like to establish a three minute time limit for each speaker. So, you come to the microphone, I will give you time to three minutes to speak. If, if somebody answers a question in the meantime that has not taken off your time, you may speak twice. <clears throat> After you've spoken twice, if you want to speak a third time, you must wait until everybody else in the hall has spoken. Be courteous and respectful. All votes must be vo uh, vo will be voice votes unless there's a requirement of two-thirds or greater. If it's at that point, we will take a standing vote. A motion to move the question. If a motion is made to move the question and it receives a second, all people that are standing in line or have been previously recognized to speak will be allowed to speak, after which the question will be asked of the person who made the motion if he wishes to, he or she wishes to proceed with the uh, motion, if he says yes, then the vote will be taken and a two-third count must be attained. All amendments, other than a one or a two word change to what is printed, must be in writing. With those announcements, I would like to proceed. Moderator. Yes. I just have a question for Mr. Uh, Gilmeister. For yeah, Mr. Gilmeister, Kimball Street, Brookfield, you know, whatever. Um, I have a question about your three minute time limits uh, and those things that are that you're setting here. Could I ask town council if that's a legitimate thing for the moderator to do if it's not contained in the bylaws or any other form of information or without any kind of notice? Uh, to town's members that that's actually going to be a, a, an established rule? Yes, town council. Good evening. Hello, can you hear me? Good evening, folks. So under state statute, the moderator has extremely broad authority to regulate the proceedings at town meeting and to also adopt reasonable rules as to the, how town meeting will proceed. Um, certainly, you know, if folks want to vote on it as a motion, um, that that is also available. But I think that, you know, given the breadth of the warrant, um, you know, and I do think that folks want to con to finish tonight and we need to finish tonight because we have to have the town meeting closed and the budget voted by June 30. Um, so if we go past tonight, that there's going to be a real risk that that's not going to happen. Any other questions? For the selectmen or the advisory care to make any statements before we start? Jeff? I just had one. Can 
Okay. Article 24, to see if the town will vote pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 38H, as hereby written in the warrant. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Clarence. I, I move that the town vote to approve Article 24 as written in the town warrant, except that the phrase or take any action relative thereto be omitted. All right, where, where is that? <laughs> this is an article put forth by the assessors, and I saw Al out there. Does Al want to speak to it? Mike, are you all set with that? Motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Yeah. Motion has been seconded. Discussion. Al Jones, Assessor's Office. This article. Address, is, please. Oh, 48 Allen Road. Thank you. Um, this, this article will allow the Board of Selectmen to enter into a pilot, pilot agreement, which is payment in lieu of taxes for the solar field that will be installed on Mitchell Hill Road. Whether it was there a different question than that, or it's a procedural thing that needs to happen before a pilot can be uh, entered into. We did the same thing for the two on uh, South Maple Street. Is it on? Hello? I stepped over. Did everybody hear that? I think everybody heard you. Okay. <laughs> it was a clarification, right? It wasn't a question in particular. I'd love to stay up here. <laughs> As he immediately dodges. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you wouldn't do that. Uh, I just stand in opposition to this. I think that taking uh, taking land off the tax rolls is not a good idea for for, for Brookfield. Hold uh, behind the thing, uh, but I just I, I'm just opposed to to taking taking property off the tax rolls, even if it's for uh, nonprofits like that. Thank you. Response. It, do, it does not come off the tax rolls. Um, what this allows us to do is the actual infrastructure that's put there will get personal, uh, it's a personal property tax and it, it's under the pilot. The actual land that it's on will go from being agricultural to commercial, so it so is an, an increase in taxes. Does that answer your? It's not coming off the tax roll. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the article as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? No. I consider that a vote. <laughs> article 25. To see if the to see if the town will vote to establish a special purpose stabilization fund pursuant to general law chapter 40 section 5b as presented herein mr moderator yes i move that the town vote to approve article 25 as written in the town warrant except for the phrase or to take any action relative thereto be omitted second. motion has been made and seconded discussion <clears throat> This this uh, article requires a two-thirds vote. <coughs> yes, Mr. Gilmore. Is this on the floor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Again, I'm I, I'm in opposition to this. I don't think that uh, we should be taking uh, these th this land. Uh, you know off the tax rolls and I understand I'm using off the tax rolls but this is going to reduce our tax base and I just am opposed to that it is, thank you this isn't taking it off the tax rolls what it allows us to do is to microphone please does it work yeah it works very closely again this does not take this off the tax rolls 
Any further discussion? Peter Masuso, why? What's the Address, reason for take, uh, uh, 15 River Street? Uh, or why are we taking out or or take any action relative thereto on this? Who who is that? Who would that be? Would that be the Board of Selectmen? That would if we took any other action, is that the Board of Selectmen that does that, or is there a reason we're omitting that? Continue. Through, through you, Mr. Moderator, can I answer? Yes. So the reason why we draft these warrant articles with that phrase or take any other action relative thereto is to allow town meeting to make some adjustments within the scope of the article on town meeting floor. Um, but the vote has to be more precise as to what's being authorized. So that that catchphrase is, is generally never included in the actual authorization. The authorization here is to establish a special purpose stabilization fund in accordance with the state statute. Um, and, and that's that's it. That's what the, the, the um, article does. That catchphrase is really just to give us some wiggle room here on town meeting floor. Okay, Mr. Moderator. Then if we need some wiggle room, why are we taking it out? Can somebody here to answer that? Through you, Mr. Moderator, I really didn't do a good job the first time. Um, I'm going to try it again. Um, it, the vote has to be precise. The vote is to authorize, if the meeting chooses to, to authorize the establishment of the Special Purpose Stabilization Fund. As you see in every article on the, on the warrant, that extra language is included, particularly to address situations where from the printing of the warrant to town meeting, perhaps we need to make an adjustment, for example, not relevant to this article, but in a money article. If we say that we're gonna uh, appropriate or transfer a set dollar amount um, from a, a particular fund, but we've got that extra phrase or take any other action relative there too, it does allow town meeting to make adjustments um, within the scope of the article. So it's not, it, it, there can't be blanket authorizations um, that carry past the warrant to take any other action, right? Because town meeting is speaking on what specific action it's authorizing. Did I do better that time? A little. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that I can do it a third time and make it make any more sense. Just blame the lawyers. It's it's you know we put it in. And Further discussion. Because it's a two-thirds vote, I have two counters. All those that are in favor of this motion, please stand. <laughs> and 37 is 62. All those opposed, please stand. The count is six. The motion passes 62 to six. Article 26, to see if the town will vote to amend the town of Brookfield zoning bylaw by the regulation of solar energy systems by the following addition, as hereby uh, uh, listed. Mr. Moderator. Yes, I move Linda. that the town vote to approve Article 26 as written in the town warrant, except the phrase or any take, any action relative there to be admitted. Motion has been made and seconded. Karen? It's a bit tall for me, but I'll, I'll cope. Um, I want to start off. Na name and address, I'm please. sorry, Sharon Mahoney, 130 Long Hill Road. I just want to take a moment before I start in on this to thank the planning board for their year's worth of work on this. We had approximately six extra meetings in addition to our 12 planning board meetings to work on these amendments. 
I especially want to thank Russ Faniff and Kevin Urkula for actually writing the drafts that appear before you with the help of town council and with the support of the advisory committee and the selectmen. Um, you all have a sheet, or I hope you do, you all have a sheet explaining in brief what you're going to be looking at tonight on 26 and 27. I hope you've had the chance to read it. Can people hear me, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I hope you've had a chance to read it. Um, I will go over the salient points real quick. This article about solar energy systems is a new zoning bylaw. It will be added to the current zoning bylaws as Section 12. Massachusetts general law does not allow us to ban solar installations. It's part of their green initiative. I believe that's the name of it. So we are not allowed, this is really bothering me, um, so we're not allowed to ban these outright. However, we are allowed to make reasonable regulations that would fit, make them fit in with the town and balance the needs of private industry and companies and businesses and private individuals who want to build these with the the needs of landowners and abutters and the the um, appearance of the town in general. We do not have any specific regulations on the zoning bylaw for these systems. So the reason we're bringing this forward is because of concerns that have been raised over the past two years with regard to how these systems affect the towns around us visually, how they affect the, the towns environmentally, how they affect the towns in terms of land use in general, and the, um, how they affect uh, the use of agricultural land and vacant land and open space. Um, we've sought advice not only from the usual group, um, Town Council and the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, but we've also been following the news stories about these arrays. And we've been following remarks on social media, and I've gotten a good deal of feedback from individuals in this town, both in person and through email. We've taken all of that into account. Um, we're trying to balance, again, the needs of the town with, as brought up by advisory, and, and well they should, that these arrays do bring revenue into the town, as per the, one of the previous motions. So there are, there are pluses and minuses. We've done our level best to try and balance both of these. Um, We've done this by putting together by a bylaw that regulates the setbacks, the screening, the size of the arrays, the amount of vacant land that can be used, the amount of trees that can be cut down, and so on and so forth. Um, we have in here a set of definitions so that there's no ambiguity about what we mean in the bylaw. The use regulation table, which you have in front of you, I'll just read what these letters stand for. R, R is rural residential, V is village, B, A is business A, B, B is business B, both of which are concentrated along Route One, um, Route 9 mainly, and uh, South Maple, and F, P for floodplain. As far as the letters underneath those, S, P stands for requirement that a special permit be applied for, N means under no circumstances will these uses be allowed in that district, and N means the same thing. Yes means that under this bylaw, the uses mentioned in that line will be allowed by right and no permit will be required. Um, I'd be happy to stay up here and answer any questions. Um, and Mr. Moderator, that's up to you to, to call the shots at this point. If you would uh, be willing to answer questions, that would be great. Discussion. No discussion. <laughs> this, this requires a two-thirds vote. My counters, please. Uh, before I do that, let me try a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And opposed. It's unanimous. I, that's a count. <laughs> Article 27. To see if the town will vote to amend the Brookfield zoning bylaw by deleting the current Section 8 special regulations 
subsection G, registered marijuana dispensaries, and replacing it with section G as presented herein. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Clarence. I move that the town approve Article 27 as written in the town warrant, except for that the following typographical errors be corrected. Under section G3, definitions in the definition of marijuana for adult use, the reference to 925 CMR 500 be changed to 935 CMR 500. In, in the definition of non-medical marijuana, the regulatory citation of 105 CMR 725 be changed to ooh, 935 CMR 501. And in section G.9B, special permit conditions, the citation uh, citation CMR 500.110 be changed to 935 CMR 501.110 uh, item 6 and that the phrase to or to take any other action relative thereto be omitted. Is there a second? Second. Clarence, do you have that in writing, please? Yes, Sharon. Again, to, uh, through the moderator, um, some background on this. The state, in its wisdom, held a statewide referendum um, in November 2016 asking whether adult use recreational marijuana should be legalized. The state voted in favor of this by 53.6% and 46.4% opposed. Brookfield's results on the same vote townwide were 56.1% to 43.9%, which basically gave greater approval than the statewide average. The, the um, consequences of this are, because Brookfield voted yes, we cannot ban marijuana facilities of any kind in this town. The only way this could be gotten around is if the town paid for and held a ballot initiative townwide that resulted in a reversal of these numbers. Given that, and the fact that we have no bylaw on the books for adult use recreational marijuana, the planning board spent a year, along with the solar bylaw, studying the matter with exceptional help from town council and also the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. And what we did, what we decided to do was to take the existing medical marijuana overlay district which was passed I believe last year the year before and incorporate into this overlay district adult use recreational as well now some explanations about what an overlay district is if you look at your leaflet the first map is the tax map for the town it doesn't have any of our markings on it it's just there is a baseline the second illustration which shows red cross hatching shows the a overall location of where these overlay districts that would allow marijuana businesses to locate are the third page and the fourth page are basically close-ups of those two zones let's make sure I get these in the right order the first one shows Western Route 9 either side of the street the sections marked MOD are marijuana overlay districts, as they will be renamed. If you look at this closely, you can see there are no rural residential areas within this overlay district. That was established the last time we voted on this. There is a zone here around Lewis Field and around, I believe it's the, um, the churches on the common, which are buffer zones. The state has recommended in accordance with, in sort of congruence with what the, um, they have laws for liquor stores. They, they recommend that towns establish a 500 foot buffer zone around any establishment, church, library, school, any establishment where minors will be gathering for any activity and not allow any marijuana businesses within that buffer zone. And I need to correct something I said to a couple of residents here. I told them that if the buffer zone fell within their property, the part of the property that is not within the buffer zone, 
would be would not fall within the buffer zone and would you'd be able to put a business there. I was incorrect. The the, uh, the bylaw states that if any part of a property is within a buffer zone, that property cannot be used for these type of businesses. If you go to the last page, this one here, showing South Maple Street. This is the third section of the marijuana overlay district. I'm going to pause here and explain what an overlay district is. As I mentioned with the solar bylaw, we have five types of districts in town. An overlay district literally is overlaid on top of those districts. And the bylaw spells out which rules apply in which situation. But for our purposes, this overlay district means that any property that falls within these overlay districts, with the exception of those properties that fall within or touch the buffer zone, are allowable districts for marijuana use under the terms of this bylaw. I would like to ask this assembly to refrain from talking about the merits or the demerits of marijuana legalization. That is not what this bylaw is here to discuss or to vote on. It will only needlessly extend the conversation. We're not here to make decisions on this. We can't make decisions on this. This bylaw is an effort to protect the town within reasonable limits, again, balancing private use with public good. And one more thing, I've been approached by a couple of growers in the area asking why rural residential is not included in this bylaw. The reason it is not is we're trying to be very conservative about this. If there is a demand or a enthusiasm in this town for allowing marijuana growing or processing businesses in rural residential areas, we would like to hear from you. We would like to talk to you. We would like to get together and hammer out an amendment to this to, br to bring before the town next year if there is a demand for this. And there is an advantage, there is tax money to be had and benefits to be had for marijuana businesses. And some people in this town might want to grow marijuana to sell and to make some money. We're willing to listen to you, we're willing to talk with you, we're willing to hammer out a bylaw. But for now, this is what's in front of you, this is what we're voting on, and I ask your support for it because a lot of thought went into this, and while the planning board as a whole does not weigh in one way or another about the merits of legalization, we do think the town needs to have a specific bylaw for these businesses. And with that, I'll take questions. Mr. Gilmeister. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Uh, I'm opposed to this. Uh, I'd like to, an amendment. Uh, I'd like to mo I move to amend uh, section 8G10 sub A, which is the buffer zone area. Uh, and I'd like to amend it. Hang on, let me find that. That's fine. 8. What section again, please? Ten. Ten. It's the buffer zone. Yes. Uh, and it's subsection A. Uh, and it says 500 feet there. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to strike 500 and insert 2,500. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. I'm a parliamentarian. I got to teach my own family how to how to second a motion. Can you imagine that? They've heard me do this a million times, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, in support of my amendment, uh, I believe the current medical marijuana zoning bylaw actually has this number in it, uh, and I argued for it uh, when we adopted this zoning bylaw. Uh, a couple of years ago, several years ago, uh, and my purposes are 500 feet is not very far from our school, uh, from our elementary school. It's about halfway down, it's not even halfway down Central Street, and, and I think that it should be much stronger uh, than that, Mr. Moderator, simply because I think it's important to guard our children. Uh, I am opposed to, to uh, uh, marijuana use, et, et cetera, uh, and I think it's a real danger to our children. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Mr. Moderator, this is speaking directly to the question. Okay. Okay. It's speaking directly to the question. I don't really, it's directly to the question. I don't think 
uh, that we should be allowing uh, you know casual use of marijuana and pot shops in this town uh, I just totally disagree with that but I certainly uh, don't want any of these facilities mr. moderator anywhere near Lewis field our school or any churches or other uh, or other uh, religious organizations in this town and so that's why I'm establishing this the thank you mr. moderator thank you Sharon? I'm unsure of procedure here. Should I let all the questions go or should I respond to this directly? Uh, there's a motion on the floor to change it, so uh, I think we need discussion. Okay. Um, yes, this was changed last time, and it had the net effect of obliterating most of the overlay district except a very small portion on South Maple Street, thereby negating the, the purpose of an overlay district practically all together. Also, we were in a very real danger of having the Attorney General review this amended bylaw and see this as an effort to basically obliterate the whole purpose of the bylaw. If the AG had found that, and please Town Council correct me if I'm wrong, if the AG had found that, we would be left without any protection whatsoever. Um, I would like to ask Town Council if this motion were to pass and the AG found out found that the half a mile, five-fold increase in the buffer zone was in fact an effort to negate the purpose of the bylaw would, number one, what would the consequences be for the bylaw? Uh, in, in a sense, would we be left without an entire bylaw or would the bylaw go back to the proposed 500 feet or would that portion of the bylaw be struck down entirely? Through you, Mr. Moderator. Town Council. So we did, in fact, recommend that the buffer zone be no more than 500 feet because precisely of the issue that Sharon had, had identified, which is we're finding with, with some of our communities that when you have an overly, can you all hear me? Yes. Um, when you have an overly large buffer zone that the Attorney General, in, in fact, does question whether the effect is to basically negate the purpose of, of the bylaw, especially given sort of the size of the town and you look at sort of all of those issues. Um, so we, we have found that the that, that our towns are running into some, some trouble with overly large buffer zones. The Attorney General could, and I'm just speaking directly to this, I can't predict exactly what the Attorney General will do. Um, when a, the Attorney General is reviewing both general and zoning bylaws, they have a lot of options. Sometimes they strike down the specific provision that they feel is violative or sharply inconsistent with state law. Um, sometimes they give a caution and say, better ask town council what to do about this. Um, so it, it is an, a, a real possibility that the attorney general could say that this buffer zone as defined at 2500 is, is they're not going to approve that, um, in which event it doesn't automatically revert back to the 500. Um, you may be left with no buffer zone. Thank you. Sean Mulligan, 7 in River Street. Uh, I urge you to defeat this amendment. 500 feet is is uh, perfectly reasonable. I, I don't really understand the concern about children. I mean, we have liquor stores now. Children aren't allowed to buy liquor. I assume that children will not be allowed into these facilities to purchase marijuana. So I urge you to, with the 500 feet, Thank you. Mr. Gilmeister. I just want a clarification on the answer from council. Did the AG, in fact, sh turn this down the last time that we voted on this? I just want an answer to that question. I don't believe they did. I didn't look at Town council? Or Sharon, can somebody answer that? I believe Mr. Gilmeister is talking about the medical marijuana overlay district, which was approved previously to the same dimensions as this and which the bio, the buffer zone was increased by Mr. Gilmeister's amendment to 2,500 feet and submitted to the AG on that basis. I believe that, did I get that right? That's correct and all I want to know is whether or not the AG uh, uh, turned that down. That's all I want to know. I mean currently I think the, 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 the section that we're amending, uh, section 8, exists with that 2,500 feet, and I just want to make sure that that's true. Is it in current bylaw? Uh, the answer is the current bylaw is a medical marijuana bylaw. It's a medical dispensary bylaw. 
And yes, because of your amendment, that buffer zone was increased to 2,500 feet. That is the existing bylaw. This bylaw would reduce that back to what the planning board, the advisory committee, and citizens I've talked to consider a reasonable buffer zone. There are, I should mention, there are stringent bylaws and um, stringent regulations in place, both at the state level and in this proposed bylaw, that would prevent children from even setting foot in one of these establishments. Moreover, the activities that take place on this property cannot be carried on outside the property. There are heavy fines and penalties for doing so. I firmly believe that 500 feet is reasonable. The state has weighed in on this. They believe this as well. Town Council has weighed on it, in on it. The, um, the, um, the uh, advisory committee and the selectmen agree that it's reasonable. And I urge the town to vote this amendment down. Mr. Gillis. Hi, it's Steve. M microphone. Uh, Steve Gillis, uh, I'm on Lake uh, Lane 23, right. Um, I, um, I would oppose this 2,500 foot amendment as well. Um, uh, so two weeks ago, I went to this uh, uh, event called the Business of Marijuana. It was put on by the Worcester Business Journal at the DCU Center. There was uh, half a dozen businesses there d displaying. There was over 500 people there. I met P uh, the uh, uh, economic development manager from Uxbridge. I met the uh, town manager from the town of Athol. Um, real good information here if you'd like to. I bra grabbed a few of the Worcester Business Journals about it. But um, um, they were very, very specific to a couple of things. One is... Um, uh, this is a very tightly regulated industry, extremely tightly regulated industry. We have two liquor stores within, perhaps one's within 50 feet of the school. Um, we have a gun shop uh, in town. And um, the other thing is, um, it is, it is very st strictly controlled. You have to be 21 or whatever to enter. You cannot purchase without that. Um, you have to go through a screening process to enter. Has, if you've been to Cultivate in Spencer, places, you know, it, it's like Fort Knox in there. So it's safe, it's secure. Um, the investment is substantial for these things. There is no owner operator of any of these facilities that is going to risk um, selling to minors or any other thing. And, um, and, and their concern is the safety and the well-being of our children in this town as well. Opposing a 2,500-yard, 2,500-foot uh, uh, <clears throat> zone is not a vote against children or any such thing like that. So I would oppose this amendment. Mr. Gilmeister. My concern, Mr. Moderator, and the way and the reason why I'm asking uh, my fellow citizens to vote in favor uh, of this is that uh, marijuana and pot shops are not the same thing as alcohol. And the reason why they're not is because the products that are being developed from the cannabis industry are, are going to be uh, candy type of of, of edibles uh, that are going to be able to be purchased uh, at these shops. And my concern is that if there's one within 500 feet, someone could easily go in there and, and, and purchase some edibles and then just walk out and walk down the street and start selling them to the kids coming out of the school. Okay, And I'm very, very concerned about this. And I think that's a very real, some of these edibles are like candy uh, and they're very dangerous for children. And I think it's a very dangerous thing to have one of these pot shops within 500 feet of a school or Lewis Field or a church or any of these others. There's plenty of, there's plenty of area in this town outside of 2,500 feet of any of, these, any of these localities where a pot shop could be put up. 
There are plenty of them, Mr. Moderator, and I believe I have about a minute and a half. What? Uh, so, uh, I, Mr. Moderator, I just asked the Mr. Moderator out, out of order, please. Continue. Thank you. I strongly oppose uh, this this bylaw amendment, and I strongly support having a buffer zone of 2,500 feet. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Peter. Well, I know Sharon's behind me, but after that, I'll just um, move the amendment. Name and address, please. You can't. Peter Martell, Moss Silver. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to move the question. I have a point of order. Uh, I think she's spoken more than more than twice, Mr. Moderator. Oh, she, she, she is at the, at the end. We have uh, uh, advisory wanted to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Moderator, through you, um, I understand Mr. Gilmeister's concern and I agree with it, but fundamentally, 2,500 feet is not enough and it's too much. He first raised the concern, well, it's, near, it's too close to the school. Well, if you look at the map, the closest, if you go west, you have to go all the way down Central Street, get to Route 9, and then go further to get there. So it's not near the school. If you go east from the school, you gotta go down by the clam box. It's like, I don't know about your kids. My kids complain. If I park in front of Stop and Shop, we get some stuff there and I say, oh, we're gonna walk over to Walmart and get some. Oh, Dad, can't we park in front of Walmart? It's like, no, we're going to walk. It's like, and then his, all, his other major concern that he raised, too close to Lewis Field is what it boils down to. If someone wants to do what he says, that's bad. But also, if they want to do it, another 2,000 feet, they probably got a car. They're gonna go to the town line and do it. This, in my opinion, this amendment will not provide any practical protection and it risks the bylaw. I do not support it. I will vote against it. Thank you. Sharon. I would only like to remark that it is regrettable that this is the sole subject people have had a chance to talk about rather than the merits of the, the rest of the merits of the bylaw itself. Having said that, and seeing no one behind me. So the, the motion has been made and seconded to, to move the question. So we are going to vote on Ending debate. the amendment. The question, okay, as to whether we're going to move the question on the 2,500 feet. I believe this is a two-thirds vote as well. Is that right, Mike? Is it not required? All right, it is not required. We'll do a voice vote. Mr. Marty, point of order? Yes. At the town meeting last, at the previous instance of the town meeting, a moving of the question required a two-thirds vote for your opinion because it cut off. Is that, was that, a, are we doing it? Now? I, I thought that we I thought it had to be a two-thirds vote as well it, it is a two-thirds thank you thank you so this vote requires a two-thirds counters to end debate you are voting you are voting to move the question on the amendment my counters, please. All those are in favor of moving the question, please stand. the vote is 29 and 40 that is 69 those opposed please stand 
motion passes. That's that's the amendment, right? I'm, I'm sorry, that's correct. Yeah. That's a simple majority. Okay, thank you. So now we are going to vote on the amendment of the 2,500 feet. This does not require two thirds. It is a voice vote. All those in favor of the 2,500 feet, please signify by saying yes or aye. Yes. 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 And opposed? No. no. Does not pass. Any further discussion? Back to the main motion. Any further discussion on Article 27? Mr. Moderator, Wally Connor, Long Hill Road. Uh, under Article 27, it states registered marijuana dispensaries, quotation marks, medical adult use marijuana facilities. So I'm, I'm interpreting that as being a, a uh, actual where, where are you looking at in the in the article, article 27 I'm sorry whereabouts if what? you go to the second line it says special regulation subsection G registered marijuana dispensaries okay and the third line it says medical adults use marijuana facilities so I'll just have a question if it, is this in regards to dispensaries where a retail product is sold and or a use facility where someone could actually go in and partake of use of marijuana? Is that what we're talking about? That's what it says. I think there's a, that's a, that's a good question because it, obviously there's a misunderstanding here. The, let me go to the description. Registered marijuana dispensaries refers to the previous bylaw, which was for medical use marijuana stores. The new Section 8G would refer to any facility that manufactures, sells, grows, dispenses, etc., medical or adult use marijuana. Does that, does that clarify? So this, oh I, yes, as to the on-site use, this bylaw, oh yes, Russ, oh, I'll let my uh, compatriot. So uh, there is a section. Please, please identify yourself. Sorry, Russ Vanoff, uh, 6 Address. Howard Street and Planning Board. Um, there is a section that speaks to uh, on-site use. There, There is no on-site use at any of these facilities that is prohibited. There is an additional section that speaks to uh, any kind of clubs or like a bar um, and that is also prohibited. So those two things are not going to be part of what's in Brookfield. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. So now we're just talking, we're just talking about dispensaries and everything else that's listed under here, which would include uh, growing, cultivating, etc. So everything is under one. Yes, if you look at the definitions um, here, um, there are a number of different marijuana-related businesses. Under definitions, there are cultivator, facility, which is defined as a testing laboratory or product manufacturer, transporter, retailer. There is marijuana retailer there is social consumption facility and that is basically defined so that we can tell people exactly why we're prohibiting it 
um, a testing facility, which is essentially, again, an industrial use, a manufacturing facility for manufacturing marijuana products. A marijuana transportation or distribution facility that is a warehouse or storage area. And, of course, mar medical marijuana treatment center, which we have discussed at length tonight. All of those come under the umbrella of this proposed bylaw. Okay, thank you, Sharon, for that. First of all, I, I just like to say that um, because this law is legal not only in the state of Massachusetts but in Brookfield, that I don't think this bylaw prohibiting um, someone on the other side of the river from potentially growing in a commercial form marijuana to be sold to another company or entity. I don't think it's right to restrict it. This, if I'm reading it right, you can only do it in these MOD areas on the map. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's fair. Especially anybody that's lived in town for a long time that has the potential to do the growing as a business. Not, not dispensing it, not selling it on the property, but growing it, packaging it, and selling it to another entity to be sold somewhere else. I don't think we should be restricting or prohibiting that. So I'd like to make a motion to have an amendment to take out the phrase under definition, marijuana cultivator, which lists, or which states, an entity licensed to cultivate, process, and package marijuana and to transfer marijuana to other marijuana facilities, <clears throat> but not to consumers. Could you provide that in writing, please? If I can have a minute, sure. Yep, absolutely. Uh, uh, Russ, yeah. uh, I believe Steve Gillis uh, was recognized first. Was there, was there a second? Was there a second? No. 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 Uh, there was no, is there a second? I'm sorry. Motion has been made and seconded. Thank you. Um, my, I, I have a question and I think it's very along the lines of the speak we just heard. In other words, um, how do we increase the overlay district so that other areas of the town um, can partake in this. How, how is that done? Is it done on this floor? Um, and um, and that's that's with the understanding that the planning board had this open to the public meetings, uh, very little in attendance. But you know, how do you get that done? Okay, I'd, I'd like to address the original issue. Um, you know, the idea that. Um, you can set up a greenhouse and just start growing this stuff and make a couple million dollars is um it's it's so far out of the reality of what this is uh, seen any of the growth facilities um you know the the research that we've done on it uh, a growth facility looks like a uh, looks like a small prison there's no windows it's uh completely secure barbed wire fencing this is all stuff that is set um from Cannabis Control Commission and from the state. Um, we don't get any say in that. So it, it's not an agri, the state has decided it's not an agricultural, uh, it's not a farming um, line of business. Uh, this is commercial, industrial, hydroponic, indoors, scrubbers on the, on the air systems. Th this is not anything that you typically in a rural, rural, rural residential would want next to a neighborhood or a house or things like that. And that's what we uh, wrote the bylaw to consider uh, was that um, I don't think anybody, um, you know, I, I, we, we want to support business development, but I don't think anybody really wants uh, like a prison set up next to their home. Uh, so that's, that's really why we wrote the bylaw the way we did. Uh, and, and we really did a lot of research and we looked at what other people were doing and how these things are, are being set up. And you know, you, you don't have to look very far to see the problems uh, that residents have with these grow operations. Just look over in Charlton um, and uh, they're having all kinds of problems because a big grow operation wants to come in and set up shop and, and it's, it's not agriculture, it's, it's, it's an industrial, 
you know, uh, locked down, high security thing. So. I don't want to be accused of monopolizing the time here, so I'm just going to ask town council, um, pursuant to Mr. Gillis's question, could we take a vote to modify the overlay district here tonight? I suspect the answer is no, because it would require a public hearing, because it would substantially change the scope of the bylaw. Um, but I would appreciate hearing from an expert on that question. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Town Council. So I have to say, I have a group of attorneys in my office that deal with marijuana extensively. I call them my pot people. I'm not a pot person. <laughs> However, this comes up quite frequently at town meetings. Um, my concern with the proposed amendment is, is that taking out that definition of marijuana cultivator, you're simply taking out a definition that's defined in state law. There are other references to cultivation in the bylaw. I think we'd, ne we'd need to do more, quite frankly, to amend the bylaw if that was the intent. And I'm not clear that you can do it, given the fact that it is defined by state regulation. Um, so I think to answer Steve's question, while town meeting can do what it wants to do, right, There'll be a question for the Attorney General, right? That when, when a zoning bylaw goes up to the AG, they ask for copies of the public hearing notice, they ask for all the backup documentation to support that the process employed and required by statute has been followed. Um, I, you know, we generally defer to the moderator in terms of questions of scope, but in my view, I don't think that the proposed amendment will get what the proponent wants, number one, and I think to do that, to achieve the goal sought by the proponent, we'd, we'd need to rewrite the bylaw. And I don't think we can do that effectively on town meeting floor. Um, I know that, and I'm not advocating one way or the other, it's not my job to advocate for any particular position on this, this zoning bylaw amendment. That's for the townspeople to decide. Um, I just, I, I get concerned about unintentional consequences um, or unintended consequences. And that amendment, I have some concerns about. Um, I'd also just, you know, Sharon said at the beginning of her remarks that this may be a starting point. Um, and if folks want to propose, you know, see how this goes and see if there's an appetite for further change. Um, you have a moratorium in effect right now that expires at the end of this month um, because the Attorney General at the last, I think it was at the springtime meeting, um, allowed the town to adopt a moratorium till the conclusion of this town meeting season. So if you don't put something into effect um, at, at, by the end of the month, you're gonna have no regulation. Okay, I have, I have the amendment uh, in writing, so I'll read it. I make an amendment to eliminate under section eight, number three, um, definitions, mar a marijuana cultivator, an entity licensed to cultivate, process, and package marijuana to other marijuana facilities, but not to consumers, to be regulated by Article 27. So that motion has been made and seconded. I don't understand it. Can you say it again, please? I'm sorry? Please repeat the amendment. I make an amendment to eliminate under Section 8, Number 3, Definitions, Marijuana Cultivator, an entity licensed to cultivate, process, and package marijuana to other marijuana facilities, but not to consumers, to be re regulated by Article 27. Is that what that's at? Article 27. Mm -hmm. So just eliminate. That's all it means. The one may be regulated by Article 27. Um, Mr. Through you, Mr. Moderator, I believe eliminating that phrase will not have the effect Mr. Connor desires. Um, I did mention to Mr. Connor when I spoke with him earlier on the phone this week that we would be willing to work with any entity in town, farmers, growers, um, business people, um, entrepreneurs, to increase this overlay district to rural residential, but that we wanted to be conservative starting out. 
So I believe making this type of amendment now would only damage the intent of the entire bylaw, leave us open to it being struck down by the Attorney General, and leave the town without any regulation whatsoever. And so with due deference to the um, to the intent of Mr. Connor, I do oppose this um, amendment. Thank you. Mr. Connor? Yes, just uh, real quick in rebuttal to the gentleman who spoke of. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but any marijuana facility in the future in the town of Brookfield will be have to have a special permit approved. Can somebody Every, answer that? Too close. <laughs> So, when someone comes to us in the future, uh, we would treat it similar to a solar situation where now we have an approved set of bylaws um, or an approved bylaw, uh, and then the permit would have to adhere to that bylaw. There would be additional special conditions that um, give us a little bit of flexibility in the special permit process. Uh, but in, in uh, in summary, we would have a roadmap basically um, to approve these projects. Um, on top of that, there are a number of guidelines, regulations uh, from Cannabis Control Commission, uh, from the Attorney General, and um, from all the other towns that are doing this now and have done it uh, that we're learning from. So, okay, thank you. Uh, just to add to it, any application for a commercial grower outside of the MOD district in the future, I'm guessing would require the sp not only a special permit, but a special hearing uh, to take into account concerns of abutters. No? Kind of. Uh, no, not precisely. The, the, uh, the overlay district is the overlay district. If there is a grower outside of the overlay district wants to apply, they will not be able to apply unless their property falls within the overlay district and outside of the buffer zone. But as I've said, the overlay district could be changed at a future town meeting. And we would be happy to work with anybody who would like to see that done. We, you know, the, the um, agricultural commission, local farmers, local growers, and put that before the town. But as it stands right now, if this bylaw is passed, if your property does not fall within the overlay district, you would not be able to do any marijuana associated activity, including growing. Okay, I'll just end again with my statement earlier that I don't think it's right to restrict any facility in the town of Brookfield to what's proposed in the overlay district. I don't think it's right, I don't think it's fair. Um, and I move to vote on the amendment. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded. We are now voting on whether to, uh, on the amendment, right, as, as previously read. Point of order, Mr. Moderator, I yes. believe the rule here is that you cannot make a comment and then move the question. So, I don't think the motion made to move the question, there's nobody else to speak. So we will now vote on the motion, on the amendment, I'm sorry. All those in favor of the amendment as read, please signify by, by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? No. no. The amendment does not pass. All right, back to the main motion. Right. Mr. Gilmeister. Motion was made to... Second. 
moved the question and has been seconded. That requires a two-thirds vote. Those that would like to move the question, please stand. All those who are opposed, please rise. No opposition. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, so we are going to vote on Article 27. This also, re I'll take a voice vote and see what happens. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. We'll do it. We will do a standing count. All those in favor, please stand. <laughs> Twenty six. <laughs> Twenty six and forty seven. So the total is seventy three. Those opposed, please stand. The total is four. The motion passes. <laughs> Article 28. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money as debt service for a police station or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town appropriate $51,737 refund anticipation from Tantasqua to the department, uh, to the police department debt service account for the purposes of paying down debt service for the police station. Would you repeat that amount please? Fifty-one thousand seven hundred thirty-seven dollars. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Yes. Um, we ha uh, would need a motion. I move that we allow the treasurer uh, to speak. Second. Do we have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Go ahead. The microphone, please. Lonnie, is this working? Yeah. Okay. So, Lonnie Creation, interim treasurer. Um, I just want to clarify that the fifty-one thousand seven thirty-seven we have already received from Tantasqua this fiscal year. In FY twenty, it is seventy thousand 
something. Yep. <laughs> so, Mr. Moderator, through you. Okay. The the original we'll, motion. Hold the microphone right in front of you, if yeah, you would. The uh, the the motion as written was based on what we thought was the clarification to apply this year's return to the debt service account. Uh, apparently, there was a misunderstanding with the with the treasurer's office. I can pull up the amount that's the anticipation refund, um, but the. Uh, this motion, I thought, was to apply what had been received back uh, to the debt service for this year. Can we get a clarification? the moderator yes okay is this motion hold on for FY 19 that we're presently in or starting July 1st for FY 20 and if if I may, does it mean that you're going to be getting that amount of money, 51000 from the school in FY20? Is that what the motion says? Can we come up? Can we come up with a figure? Do we need a recess and and uh, to to resolve this? I'd like to amend uh, the article to read seventy-one thousand six hundred dollars. That is the amount for 20 that we will be receiving from Tantasco. $71,600. That motion has been made and seconded. Al? I missed last week, I was away. Okay. Somebody said that some of the special uh, and the annual were all combined. Is this a special town meeting question or an annual town meeting? They're all annuals. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So a motion has been made and seconded to amend the amount from the original article. The new amount is $71,600. We're voting on approval of that amended amount. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion passes. Any further discussion? So now we will vote on the article with the new amount. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 And no. It's unanimous. I consider that a vote. Article 29. To see if the town will vote to establish a police cruiser replacement account 
for the purpose of allocating funds each year toward the replacement of, of the police vehicles. I'm not going to continue to read uh, the whole thing as, as written. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Linda. I move that the town vote to establish a police cruiser replacement account for the purpose of allocating funds each year towards the replacement of the police vehicles and to extend such funds on the recommendation of the police chief and with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Donna LaFleur, East Main Street. I was just wondering how this is different than the vehicle budget that we have now that includes the fire department and the uh, police department. Why are they separate? Can somebody answer that, please? That's a, it's a good question. Uh, the Peter, uh, if you would. Well, Peter O'Connell, um, 7 Hayden Avenue, and um, I'm on Capitol. Um, we dealt uh, in bringing this article forward. Uh, w one of our objectives, uh, answering Donna's question in a moment, um, one of our objectives is to try to even out the capital spending from year to year. Uh, some years we buy a cruiser, some years we don't. And what we're trying to do in establishing this fund is uh, just first tonight to establish the fund in the fall town meeting, then we would propose to put money into that account. Enough money in each year, every year, so that we would be able to buy four cruisers in five years. And we wouldn't be spending uh, high amount one year and none the next year. So that's the objective. Donna, there's a separate account called the Fleet Repair and Replacement Account, uh, which has been subject to quite a bit of confusion over the past few years. Uh, the original intent of that account was primarily for the highway department to buy used equipment. And that, uh, the Capital Planning Committee's uh, recommendation is to return that account to that original purpose, that to restrict it uh, uh, solely to the ability of the highway department to, uh, to budget for and buy used equipment at auction where there isn't enough time to get town meeting approval for a specific per uh, purchase. So the, it's up to really up to the Board of Selectmen to establish the regulations for how that fleet repair Uh, Steve? Steve Gillis. Um, so during uh, my time in putting together this budget, I met with um, a representative of the Massachusetts Department of Revenue, local services. Uh, we went through each of the articles. She got to this one and she said, this needs to be a stabilization fund. It just can't be a fund. And so I would throw that to town council or um, our town accountant. Town council. To you, Mr. Moderator. I mean, it can be a special. It can be a special purpose stabilization fund. I'm not clear that it has to be. I mean, it, it can be. We would have to do the same thing that we did with the. What was the the, um, the chapter lands stabilization fund we created earlier? Um, whether or not that's within the scope of this article, it, it's a little iffy to me um, because we would have to accept chapter 40B, section 5B, and establish the special sta special purpose stabilization fund under this article. Any further discussion? Yes. Hi, Tom Regan, Molasses Hill Road. Um, I support this article. This is what I do with my electric bill. The electric bill is high in the winter; it's low in the summer. And rather than dealing with the uh, mo rather than dealing with the fluctuation of the cash flow, we're just setting up an account so that every year we put aside the same amount of money to buy new cruisers and. If we want, we can talk about why it's like we can 
the highway department, I'm sorry, the police department can explain to us, or they've already explained to us, they put 100,000 miles a year on each cruiser, if I recall correctly. So they go through them patrolling the town. So let's put aside the money every year so we can replace their cruisers so that they're in good working order. This is my, the thought is this is gonna make it easier for us to manage this. Any further discussion? Article 29, all those in favor, this is not a two-thirds vote, this will be a voice vote. All those in favor of Article 29 say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Motion passes. Article 30, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase gift in our eminent domain uh, as here I hereby stated. Second. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to approve Article 30 as written in the town warrant except as that no appropriation is being made under subparagraph D with the phrase or, in, or take any action relative there to be omitted. Second. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. This is Town Council. <laughs> if anybody wants any information on this, this is to do the last of the bridge work required and culvert work required on uh, Quaybog Street on the East Brookfield line and all of the property that's required for the construction folks to do their work is either state owned or town owned. So this this is, uh, or not, uh, not, I mean, I'm sorry, Shore Road. Yeah. Um, yeah, South Pond, sorry. Um, so so really all, all that we're dealing with here is just, um, you know, being able to do the appropriate work and it's, it's all government property, so. Any further discussion? All those in favor of Article 30, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Consider that a vote. Article 31. Mr. Moderator. Yes, uh, Mr. Snyder. I move the, that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into an agreement with the State Fi uh, Division of Fisheries and Wildlife and the Office of Fishing and Boating Access to manage the beach <coughs> and boat ramp at South Pond upon such terms as the Board will, uh, shall, deem to be, shall deem to be in the interest of the town, which agreements will address the collecting of fees for use of the, the operation of the South Pond Beach and Boat Ramp as agreed to by both the Fisheries and Wildlife and the Office of Fisher, Fisher, Fishing and Boating Access and the Board of Selectmen acting uh, upon behalf of the town. Motion has been made. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? David, do you want to take this or do you want me to start? I'll do it. Let me, just let me, let me start. Uh, just, we're talking about the South Pond Beach and an effort over the last uh, several months to try to figure out uh, who owns the beach, who has responsibility for the beach, and the agreement between the town and, and fisheries. And, and with that, we've learned a lot. What we tried to do is to swap properties, the beach, for a, an area of town-owned land so that we could have this beach as town property. That doesn't work out that way. So with that, uh, David Ayers is before you, and he's your new chairman of the beach committee. And uh, I would turn to him as far as our next steps. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. David Ayers, 15 Surrey Lane. I would like to offer an amendment to Article 31 of the Brookfield Town Warrant to read as follows. Uh, to see if the town will authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into an agreement with the State Division of Fisheries and Wildlife to manage the beach at South Pond which agreement will address the collecting of fees for use and other issues related to the management and operation of the South Pond Beach as agreed by the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife and the town or to make, take any relative action there too. The basic difference between the original article and the amendment is that we have omitted as a committee the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen that we enter into an agreement with the uh, voting access people 
and allow that particular um, area of involvement between the town and the state to remain as it is until we have got our feet on the ground and figured out how we are going to operate South Palm Beach to the betterment of the public. And I have this in writing. Thank you. Was there a second? Yes. There was a second. Okay. But Mr. Beth. Moderator, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to amend that to remove the verbiage or take any action relative thereto. Would you say that again, Beth? I'd like to make a motion to amend the amendment and remove the verbiage or take any action relative thereto. Second. Second. If I may, if the proponent of the motion to amend is willing to omit that, then his motion work. Just like it from the original amendment. Okay, so now we are voting on the original amendment. No, no, no. The amendment. On the amendment, I'm sorry. With that line stricken. With that line stricken. All those in favor of the amendment, um, please signify by saying aye. 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 And oppose no. Motion passes. Further discussion? Okay, so now we're going to vote on Article 31 as amended. All those in favor of Article 31 say aye. 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 And oppose no. Motion passes. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? We do. We are adjourned. We didn't, we didn't. Oh.